Thank you for coming. My goal today is to really, and I, I heard about transportation, I heard about insurance, I heard about retail, um, I heard about telco. Um, my, my intention today is to kind of talk about um, how Vertica and in general, you know, the data journey for all organizations is truly transforming and allowing us to have much more of a digitized real-time experience. Um, so one of the things I will say that with Vertica, um, it is the best technology I've ever been associated with. And one of the reasons for that is when um, you think about what makes Vertica special, it really does converge data management with data science. The way I see the world at this point is that data science is still kind of a, um, a nice to have that you know, is, is not really production ready. It's off in a corner in a lot of organizations and they're looking at interesting things, but it's not really being brought into the center of the business. And so what Vertica does really well is we're actually converging data management with data science in a way that makes it seamless. Um, and the way we do that is we actually are addressing data preparation, data enrichment, uh, data storage, data modeling, data insights. So somebody mentioned they have Elastic. Now, Elastic is a great search technology. But when you don't know what you're searching for, that's the kind of insights that Vertica is able to do. So one of the things, so Vertica is an MPP columnar database. That might not mean a lot of things to people. But basically what it means is that we were designed to read and write data orders of magnitude faster than traditional databases, traditional transactional databases like Oracle and Postgres and MySQL. Um, those were meant for high volume updates and deletes. It was, it was really based in, for financial services. And so um, you know, about 20 years ago, folks really thought that there was a need in the market for data stores that could read and write data exponentially faster. So um, several years ago, I would have said that Vertica is a database. It was purpose built for analytics, but I would also say now because we are converging data management with data science, that we have become an analytical platform. And so when you think about data preparation, enrichment, search, storage, insights, modeling, um, that all comes in a single instance of Vertica. There are very few of any technologies that are giving you that depth and breadth of the data ecosystem that Vertica does to help you drive insights into the core of your business or into the core of products. And that truly is what makes Vertica so special. The other thing that I really want to emphasize is that you know most people actually think about analytics in the form of a dashboard or a report. Again, something that you can look at passively and maybe make a decision um, a day later, a month later, a year later. What Vertica is truly doing and what our most innovative customers are like the Cupertino, California cell phone manufacturer, who I will get sued for a lot of money if I name, um, they have standardized on Vertica. AT&T has standardized on Vertica. Uber has standardized on Vertica. What do these guys all have in common? They're bringing Vertica into the core of their business. That is the difference. It's not a report or a dashboard. It's using data insights as it's being ingested to make sense of it into action. That is what is so compelling about Vertica. And folks, smart folks, smarter folks than me, like Raghu, uh, can help you down that path and journey. <clears throat> so the name of the game is digital transformation. Okay? Companies that can mine their data for insights can drive better customer relationships and improved operational efficiencies. PwC actually came out a couple weeks ago and said, that artificial intelligence and machine learning is going to be a $15.7 trillion business by 2030. Now, the only way that's going to happen is if companies take a far different approach than what they're doing today with their data. So taking data from a passive standpoint as a report or a dashboard and really transforming it to de deploy, develop and deploy data capture, analytics, and infrastructure that's hypercritical. So the key is hypercritical data now. Uh, there is no better example of this than driverless cars. Now, I love telling this story. I personally don't get driverless cars because I actually like to drive. So, but apparently it's going to be a thing. But when you think about it, if it ever is going to be a thing, there are two things. If you, data, real-time telemetry data is being brought into a data store 
and machine learning is being applied to that data on the fly to learn how to drive. The execution of that has to be flawless or lives will be lost and big brands like Tesla and BMW and Mercedes, their brands will be damaged if they don't execute with this hypercritical capabilities. Other examples of this hypercritical data, you know, the emergency room doctor, he's operating on a patient and he has complications. Within milliseconds, he or his nurse can pull up millions of electronic medical records and establish a like profile of this patient and other approaches to have a more positive, effective outcome. Okay? That's the power of real-time insights that will have a much positive, much more positive outcome. Another example is credit card transactions. And we already see this with credit card companies where they are dis determining in milliseconds whether or not a, a transaction will be approved or not or, or if it's fraudulent. I mean, I know when I travel, because I've been traveling a lot lately, that you know, if I'm making a transaction that Visa thinks is you know, anomalous, I'll get a text. Do you want this to go through? That's another example of hypercritical data. And by the way, Visa, MasterCard, uh, First Data, WorldPay, they all use Vertica. Because when you really need insights on large volumes of historical data and you want to make sense of it in milliseconds, that's what Vertica does well. So um, this is one of my favorite slides. Um, and what I think is interesting about this is clearly all of us in this room missed out on the oil revolution of the last century. And I would even go so far as to say that if you think about uh, trends that have happened in our lifetime, you know, I like to joke that when I was 10 years old, I walked into a supermarket and said to my mom, why are they selling water? It's free. But now we pay dollars of, you know, per gallon of water and, you know, no one thinks twice. The other example is, I remember when I could get a cup of coffee for 25 cents and we're literally spending five and six dollars. So these are all natural resources that people are monetizing and making a lot of money off of. Well, I would argue that everybody in this room can actually make a difference as far as making data, drive data decisions to better outcomes for your customers and your business. So that is how critical every data is to every organization out there in the world. Um, now here's the challenge. Uh, IDC says that data is growing tenfold and actually they had this uh, survey in 2017. So by 2025, which is only six years away, they said data is going to grow tenfold to 163 zettabytes. Anyone know what a zettabyte is? I certainly didn't when I uh, took this uh, when I took this slide. But a zettabyte is literally a trillion gigabytes. Okay, that is the order of magnitude that data is growing exponentially. The problem here is that most tools and processes cannot begin to comprehend the geyser that I actually put up as the backdrop. And that's the opportunity with Vertica. So, and Deloitte actually backed up the importance of AI and machine learning. This actually, this so survey came out literally two weeks ago. They polled 1,200 executives and ask them, you know, what are you guys doing with artificial intelligence and machine learning? And what they found is that 25% uh, said they're implementing it to remain competitive. And of course, 72% said they will implement it in the next two years. The survey went on to talk about the areas where it's making its most impact and the parts of the organizations where uh, it's also impacting. I actually read something on the way over here because I did have a 24-hour flight uh, that said, you know, retail and financial services are big data consumers and where they're really applying artificial intelligence and machine learning. And frankly, from my own personal um, experience, in the last six months, the amount of hedge fund companies that have become Vertica customers, um, at least a dozen. And because, you know, when you're trying to make a market window, and in financial services, speed is everything. So it's not just getting speed, but it's also being able to look at you know, volumes of data and being able to apply that to market trends, whether inflation is going up or down, or you know, um, they're going to raise the interest rate. You know, being able to make markets is how that real-time 
events are taking correlating to the historical data that happened before that. So that's where Vertica, again, is really making an impact. Um, but make no mistake that Deloitte, their conclusion was that what is driving artificial intelligence and machine learning is cloud, big data, as well as analytics. Now here's the thing, while everyone recognizes the importance of big data and analytics, uh, organizations are also myopically focused on lowering their storage costs. And because of that, more and more data exists everywhere. In fact, if I had room on this slide, I would have started with the mainframe, because hey, microfocus is in the mainframe business. But when you really think about data, the journey of data in large organizations, um, it really starts with the enterprise data warehouses. Now, EDWs, Teradays, and Exadatas, and you know, um, Netezo, which just ended life, but you know, these are monolithic, um, you know, proprietary hardware appliances that are incredibly expensive, they don't scale very well, so it's a problem. Now you have open source, and in the last five to ten years, you know, Hadoop was supposed to be the end-all, be-all, and I think people realized, especially when you look at the merge of Cloudera and Hortonworks that couldn't survive on their own, that Hadoop proved to be a lesser expensive place to put your data, but not something you can make real-time decisions on. So now we have the latest object storage in the cloud. What Amazon has really done well is popularize the use of object storage with S3. And again, the storage costs are going from you know, thousands of dollars per terabyte to hundreds of dollars per terabyte to pennies, less than pennies per terabyte. Uh, but the challenge here is, uh, in fact, what's interesting is uh, one of our customers, AT&T, uh, has now taken and said, cloud is too expensive for us because we're constantly querying the data. And well, the interesting thing about cloud is, while it's less than, excuse me, less than pennies per terabyte, there are all the cloud providers are charging you for access, for egress. And so if you're actually querying the data a lot in the cloud, it's not going to save you a lot of money. And so now companies like AT&T are recognizing this because we're still fairly early on in the cloud journey, and they're putting object storage on-prem. So what they did is they literally took Vertica and layered it on top of a pure storage environment because they are so myopically focused on driving down their storage costs. So every, data is, you know, more data, data is growing exponentially, there's more of it, and it's being stored in multiple places, even on the edge. In fact, when we were HPE, the last thing we did was we certified on EdgeLine. And EdgeLine is a edge device that sits in oil rigs, it sits on farms, uh, it sits in factories, so you actually don't have to bring all the data back to the data center or put it into a central location. So you have all the data everywhere, but the key is the ones that can converge all of the data and bring insights across the organization are those that are going to be most successful. And that's the value of Vertica. Vertica actually was originally designed as a data mart to hook up to the Teradatas and the Exadatas of the world. Um, we actually uh, can use HDFS as the underlying storage. Um, so you can layer Vertica's compute on top of HDFS. So if you have a data lake, we're not telling you to, you have to rip and replace. Keep that data lake. Vertica will sit on top and really help you mine the data in that data lake. We actually run on Azure, we run on Google, we run on AWS. Um, so we run on all the major, major clouds. Uh, Jack Shi, who's our um, rep in the region, he and I were at AliCloud a couple weeks ago in China and Huawei before Mr. Trump pulled his shenanigans <laughs> on that one. Um, so we're still working through that. Um, but, you know, so Vertica can sit in all the clouds as well. So we want to bring analytics to the data, not the other way around. And that's a big distinction with us. So um, here's where I'm going to kind of stick to my initial questions about what industries you guys were coming from. Um, I will say that uh, no one was from healthcare, transport. So Auckland Transport. Raghu is actually going to show you a, a transportation demo when I'm finished. But Auckland Transport is using Vertica to determine the on-time arrival of buses throughout the city. So the other thing they're doing is they have about 2,000 closed caption cameras throughout the city. And they're using Vertica to do safe city activities. So if there's a traffic jam or the suspicious activity, they're able to use Vertica to mine the data for anomalies and send out alerts and events. Um, so that's an example. Uh, in the retail space, 
You know, we have a lot of customers, especially online retailers, that are using Vertica to do um, clickstream analysis and to do A-B testing um, to really help you better understand who your customers are. And if they're brick and mortar, we actually have a, an OEM customer called Lab for Motion that has cameras in a store that are looking at traffic flows, that are looking at how merchandise, uh, customers interact with merchandise. Um, retail is another great example of being able to, when you have somebody in a store, you want to get the most money you possibly can out of them. And how do you do that? Well, you either have beacon technology or you actually have cell phones that will tell you where you are in the store. And Vertica has a great geospatial capability. So what we can really do there is if you know, if the retailer knows that you have an affinity for shoes and you're walking by a shoe aisle, you can literally get a text that says, here, here's a promotion on this particular brand of shoe because we know you like that particular brand of shoe. So Wayfair is actually one of the largest uh, retailers, actually one of the largest companies in the state of Massachusetts, in the US where I'm from. And they're mapping you know, furniture. So if you happen to like a lamp, they're gonna recommend what table goes with that lamp. And um, that's one of the ways that they're using Vertica. I mean, clearly another way is if you've left things in your shopping cart, and we all see this today, um, they're gonna start bombarding you with promotions and ads wherever you're surfing on the net. So that, that's another example. They wanna get you back to actually execute on that sale. So that's another way that retail can really move the envelope. Um, in the case of Uber, you know, that's probably the sexiest brand on here. Uber is, you know, using Vertica to do crowdsourcing to provide the right car at the right price at the right time. Um, Train is an HVAC manufacturer, so they're providing hot and air, cold air in municipalities throughout the world. So they have a classic IoT use case around predictive maintenance. Um, but it's actually more than just predictive maintenance because they're going to tell you when a valve is going to fail to keep that HVAC working, especially in the heat of the summer or the cold of the winter. Um, but the other thing that they're doing is they're actually now mining that data to act as a consultant to these buildings to show them how energy efficient they are. Uh, they're also using it to do workforce analytics when parts do fail or are about to fail you know, who's the most appropriate resource based on wages, based on geolocation, based on skill, based on hours worked to go and fix that problem. So workforce analytics is another key con consideration. Um, like I talked about this morning with Nike, Sunto is, uh, you know, a watch manufacturer that's telling you how healthy you are relative to your cohorts and maybe rec making recommendations. Maybe you should go running. It's been a while. So... You know, things like that, where they can track all of your footsteps. Um, any other ones on here that are in, of interest? Uh, Intuit, the software? Mother. Yeah. So Intuit is using uh, phone home capability. Basically, they are looking at every clickstream analytic for TurboTax. So TurboTax is a big uh, application in the States that people use to do their taxes. And um, what they want to understand is how people are interacting with their software so they can continue to develop um, more and more features that are in areas where their you know, customers are most interested. We actually see that a lot. We have a lot of gaming companies, a lot of gaming customers that do that as well. They want to develop the latest and greatest feature of the game based on where the interest lies and phase out things that are not really being used or you know, where there's not quite as much involvement and interaction. Or Cyberbit. So Cyberbit is actually doing user entity behavioral analytics. Um, so I, I actually spent a year uh, straddling our analytics and security group last year within MicroFocus. So this is like my favorite topic. Um, so thanks, I, I didn't ask you to ask for about that. But, um, the interesting thing with um, the security space is it's still a very reactive business. When you look at the landscape, even our own products, and if John Delk was in the room, he would not be happy with me right now. But even with our own products, you know, they're all point solutions. You know, some are focused on endpoints, some are focused on networks, some are focused on uh, users. But the problem is no one in the security space has solved the big data problem. So they can't scale, so they have to focus on one slice of the enterprise. And they're still stuck in the approach of looking at rules and signatures 
that, you know, um, unfortunately, the sophistication of the cyber thieves have gotten to the point where once a, an internal threat research team has, you know, built a rule or created a rule or signature, the bad guys have already moved on and figured out how to penetrate. So you're getting breached, you know, multiple times a day. So with user entity behavioral analytics and what CyberVit is doing, is really looking at data forensics. So if you're John Smith, and you log in every day at, from 9 to 5, and you're hitting the various applications that you work with during the day, and maybe you're you know, trans, trans, uh, transferring you know, a few gigabytes, all of a sudden you're uh, sending terabytes of data to a remote host outside of the company firewall at odd hours of the day, or maybe that only happens you know, once bi-weekly, um, that's what user entity behavioral analytics will allow you to do. Um, with Vertica behind UEBA, because we scale, you know, we have uh, like uh, the Cupertino, California company, as an example, gets an 80 to 1 compression with Vertica. And so because you can store so much more data in a given footprint, you actually have the ability to now look at how users correlate to the endpoints uh, and the applications and systems that sit on those endpoints to tell a complete story of what's normal behavior for me or for you and now when things start to deviate or, or go like all of a sudden I've been traveling a lot in, in May and so I was in China a couple weeks ago I was in Vietnam now you might want to say that's anomalous activity but if you could literally bring in my travel records to show that I was flying to these places then you'd say that's normal behavior if Vertica gives you the ability to start bringing in all the data then you can really start to make these inferences and you know, correlations that when you do get alerts, you know, if you're a SOC analyst, you're just overwhelmed, inundated with more alerts than you can handle. So I know I went off on a tangent on that one. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's what we have with it. These are, so these are examples of how Vertic is truly driving digital transformation. The only other one I'll mention is Cerner. You know, so, so Cerner is, um, has about two-thirds of the electronic medical records uh, under management in the United States. And they're using Vertica to do predictive um, patient provider as well as um, payer analysis. So they can really help you understand you know, when a patient checks into a hospital, what's the probability that he needs to be admitted or she needs to be admitted? What's the chances that she's going to come back? Um, so that's from an operational perspective. You know, from a patient perspective, again, if you're uh, on the ER table and you need some, things are going wrong, if you can mine millions of electronic medical records to see what other outcomes in like scenarios have happened, then you're gonna have a much, you're gonna first of all minimize the risk of the hospital, but also have a much more positive outcome. And another big area is with compliance. You know, should a doctor be charging what they're charging, and should a payer be paying what they should be paying? So those are other ways that the U.S. government in particular is most interested in seeing because there is so much fraud in Medicaid and Medicare. So one of the things I will say, and I actually created this slide because Vertica has never really paid Gartner. Um, and because of that, you know, we, not, we haven't always had the best relationship with Gartner. So I am so thrilled that in March, two months ago, um, they had some nice things to say about Vertica. Uh, first of all, they really did emphasize the fact that we are a strong columnar MPP relational database, uh, meaning that we read and write data really fast and really uh, effectively. And then, you know, when you, I, I will say this, when I started seven and a half years ago, Vertica competed against Greenplum, Parkcell, Aster, Infinity DB, InfoBright. None of those guys are, are still around. In fact, maybe some are in different form factors, like Greenplum, which is now Pivotal, and they open sourced it. But the point is, now we have the latest cloud uh, players, like Snowflake and Redshift. And frankly, Vertica has outperformed them on every benchmark. But we have analysts that are saying that, like Gartner, that are saying, you know, we are far superior to Snowflake and Redshift. And Gigom, who said, Vertica in Eon mode, which is our separation of compute and storage, not only are we giving you fast insights, but now we're doing it in an on-demand way. So you can keep your data in S3 and spin up your compute as you need it, okay? So that is really driving, 
if you asked me a few years ago if Vertica could be the data warehouse or the data lake, uh, I'd say it might be expensive. So you might want to take a hybrid approach. But when you can put all of your data into S3 and then only spin up the compute images as you need them, maybe you're a retailer and you have seasonality needs, then you can definitely use Vertica as your data warehouse, your data lake, albeit at millions and millions of dollars less expensive than you know, the alternative stories. And so I already mentioned AT&T, but the fact that before we even supported it, they went so far to put separation of compute and storage on premise because they've already recognized that cloud is expensive. Um, but the key here is whether it's on premise or in the cloud or on the edge, Vertica can help you analyze your data where the data resides. So what is Vertica? So Vertica is a SQL relational, massively parallel processing uh, database, meaning that we can run uh, queries as soon as the data is ingested, and we can do it orders of magnitude faster than traditional data stores, um, document stores, uh, <coughs> Elasticsearch, um, you know, MongoDB, um, uh, but ultimately what Vertica has kind of evolved into, I would say most of our customers are still using us because we have really fast ingest to query capability and we do that at massive scale. Now a lot of people will say to me, well I don't have big data yet. If you have different table sets that you want to bring together and make sense of at small data, at gigabytes of data, Vertica is truly going to help you join those tables far more effectively than anything else out there. So it doesn't have to be big data, it can be small data too. But bringing in insights when you have multiple dimensions or thousands of dimensions and you want to make sense of it when you aren't really sure of the questions to ask. So that's where most of our customers are, are leveraging us today. Now what I want to emphasize is where we evolve from a database to an analytical platform is we literally have a thousand in database analytics right now. And these are all wrapped in SQL. And this is what is helping you do your, in fact, uh, no. Uh, this is what's helping you do your data preparation, your data enrichment. We have things like gap filling and interpolation. So if you're uh, um, getting sensor data intermittent, intermittently and you want to normalize that data, Vertica can do that uh, out of the box. So that's a way that we're helping do data preparation. If you have a Hadoop data lake, we have something called Flex, which actually allows you to automate schema creation. And so Part of the challenge with Hadoop is you really don't know what's in the data and it's not easy to get that insight. So we can literally ingest all the data into a single column and then materialize it into multiple columns at the push of a button. And then you can see, is there any interest to this data? Well, let me see. So these are ways we can help with the data preparation. But we also now have literally machine learning algorithms like logistics regression and k-means clustering that are wrapped in SQL. And this is where I want to start this discussion talking about how we're converging data management with data science. Well, it's using machine learning, but being able to execute those data models in SQL that is really helping converge those two really uh, efforts. And so everything from the sophisticated unsupervised machine learning like k-means clustering all the way to simplistic analytics like outlier detection and pattern matching and you know, time series analysis. So these are all things that because you can do it in Vertica, you can do it on the entire data set as it's coming in. So it's no longer a science project, it's no longer sitting out in left field, but it's actually things that you can do in production that are driving competitive advantage to your business. And to the point of, you know, we're, we're telling you, you more and more can bring the analytics to the data, we also are a query engine. So if you have that Hadoop data lake, we have something called external tables where you can layer verticals on compute on top of an HDFS cluster. So you actually don't have to move the data out of HDFS. Um, same thing with S3. If you have your data in S3, we can literally put Vertica's compute on top of that. So we're not asking you to do a rip and replace. We're saying we understand customers have very diverse data environments, but the challenge remains how you can make sense of that data in a fast, uh, effective way that allows you to automate and remediate the outcomes. And this slide really just does highlight the flexibility that comes with Vertica. I mean, you have the ability to run Vertica on premise, in the cloud, on the edge, in data lakes. Um, we run on commodity hardware. 
um, both again in the cloud as well as on premise. Um, we give you the ability to separate compute from storage. Um, Sorry, are you saying that you could use any one of those three individually, or do you have to use the, all, all, the, all the three? Uh, yeah, you know, the SQL database. Yeah, so. Query engine, you could just use a query engine and, and not the other two. So uh, you can use all three of these or, simultaneously. Or, or just one of them. Yes, right. exactly. Uh, so that's, I would say we are the most complete ecosystem for data management and data science. Now a lot of our customers will come to us and say, well I've spent years building very complex data models, like the financial service companies, the hedge funds. And the value that we're providing there is, we have a UDX capability that, um, and here we go. So we have a UDX capability that allows you, if you've written your data models in R or C++ or Java, or Python to bring it into Vertica and again to run those very cl complex data models on all of your data as opposed to a subset. You know, if you're writing analytics in R, you can only analyze uh, the, 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 those data models on that given node. So it doesn't scale. So we're allowing you to scale the data. And again, when you run these models on the entire data set, the outcome is going to be you're going to save a lot of money because you're not building up multiple different infrastructure, but you're also getting very accurate outcomes in the results. So you're going to have such confidence in the results that you can automate again and remediate those decisions. And that's where you get into digital transformation. Um, in fact, uh, I will say uh, Uber actually helped write our Python driver and made it open source. So one of the things I want to emphasize is we uh, joke that we are more open source than open source because we work out of the box with Kafka, we work with Spark, um, you know, we, we actually work with all the Hadoop vendors, uh, Cloud Era with Parquet and Hortonworks with Orc uh, and MapR's flavor. So, you know, we actually have a really extensive um, integration and collaboration capabilities. And unfortunately, we should have bought Tableau back in 2010 when we actually had a chance and instead we bought autonomy. I don't know about that decision. But um, you know, today we work with all the major visualization players and if you're building your own visualization, you know, given the fact that we're a SQL interface uh, with standard drivers, you know, clearly ease of use there. Uh, and this is just an example of all the in-database analytics that I wanted to bring to your attention, which again has really helped us move from just a database to a data platform. So all of these are wrapped in SQL, and so you don't have to be an R expert or Python or Java. Um, you can execute any one of these uh, algorithms if you know SQL. Uh, and again, I, I kind of already touched on this, but I, the real importance, if you have your own data models, bring it into Vertica, and you can run the data faster at greater scale with more accurate outcomes. We're also an ACID compliant database, which means that every time you ask the data a question, you will get the same precise response. So I talked a little bit about this on the main stage today. When you think about all the analytics that are out there in the world and more and more use cases are being developed every day and frankly I think one of the reasons that data science and artificial intelligence hasn't emerged more uh, precipitously within organizations is people just don't know once you have technology like Vertica, well what do you do with it? And so I really think simplistically it breaks down to knowing your customers, driving operational experiences where you know, you're shrinking your supply chain, you're doing organizational benchmarking where you can look at how one organization fares against another. Uh, apply the metrics, the KPIs that we talked about this morning to determine what are the you know, critical factors and then use the analytics to say how one, organ or one, how one piece of the business is more efficient or more effective than the other. Uh, and then the other thing is whether it's network quality in the telco space or you know, it's cyber um, you know, security uh, leveraging analytics to find unknown threats, to find fraud, to find compliance issues, you know, 
the interesting thing is every major industry in which we play, these stories are somewhat different, but they're all doing the same key things. So one of the things that we would love to help you with, again with Raghu and Jack, is if you have use cases or you're in an industry of what you're thinking about, how you can more effectively leverage data. We also have a team of data scientists that can, based on the use cases that you're trying to bring to market, uh, we can make recommendations as to which of the algorithms are going to most effectively help you drive that competitive advantage. In fact, Vertic actually has something called cross-validation, which will allow you to run multiple al algorithms and see which ones give you the most precise uh, responses. <coughs> so um, I'm getting close to wrapping it up. You know, we'd be uh, silly not to mention security because security is so critical in the data space. Uh, because we have uh, secure data from Voltage within the MicroFocus family, all of your data can be encrypted uh, upon egress, uh, excuse me, upon ingress as well as egress. So um, we give you the ability to integrate with uh, Voltage's format preserving encryption, which means that from a GDPR perspective, if you are breached, you don't actually have to report. That's Article 34 in um, GDPR. So having Voltage as an as a out-of-the-box integration point into Vertica really is a, an effective way to protect your data. I'll also say that in Vertica, all the data is compressed. And so even if you uh, access, you, you, you get breached with Vertica, you can't really make much sense out of compressed data. So uh, that's the other selling point. But we have this ability. And the nice thing about format preserving encryption is it doesn't compromise performance in the data. So moving forward from a roadmap standpoint, you know, AT&T went ahead with their separation of compute and storage on-premise before we supported it. And we love having customers like that that are pushing the envelope. They felt that strongly that cloud was expensive and that they wanted to move back to the data center, that we are now racing to officially support it. Because separation of cloud, uh, compute and storage in the cloud is, is something that other vendors are doing as well. But when you do separation of compute and storage on-premise, I don't know of any other vendor that's doing that. So we believe that that is truly you know, innovative and, and foundational. Uh, from an automation standpoint, you also have um, platform as a service vendors out there, especially in the cloud, that are saying, just give us your data and you know, we'll take care of the infrastructure. We've resisted that so far because frankly, um, if you're providing um, Sears or Walmart for analytics, then the individual queries that are so critical to your business gets watered down. And you're not gonna get the very fastest possible performance. But what we are trying to do is build more automation into tuning queries, into um, looking at you know, when problems arise, how to resolve those problems. So we're bringing more and more automation into the product to help you uh, be less manually uh, oriented with that product. But we also recognize that depending on the use case, depending on the data types, uh, depending on your SLAs, that everybody uh, has different resource priorities and that sometimes that needs to be managed by the in-house folks. Um, and so therefore, I think we will have a platform as a service offering uh, in the next year. But in the meantime, we've been resisting to do that because we believe that uh, the queries and the success of your analytical initiatives is best left in your own hands. Uh, and then far, um, from a prediction standpoint, I mentioned we have a thousand in database analytics. Um, we're gonna do more and more supervised and unsupervised machine learning that will fall into Vertica. Again, if you have your own analytics, then just bring it and we talked about the benefits of that. And then finally, protection. Whether it's uh, secure data with uh, its capabilities to do encryption, or the Interset acquisition, which we are actually in the process of doing integration work next week when I get back to Cambridge, Mass. Um, the Interset folks are coming down from Ottawa. It's actually summer, or about to be summer in Boston and Ottawa, so we're, I'm, I feel gypped a little bit seeing foliage in, in, in May. I'm like, I need to get back my week, because in Boston, if anyone's been to Boston, we have 10 weeks of summer. So you gotta be there when it happens. So anyway, but um, the Interset folks are coming in, User behavioral analytics with Vertica 
um, is going to be transformative because even the secure onyxes and the exabeams and the dark traces of the world that have been out there a lot longer advertising user behavioral analytics, they still haven't solved the data scale problem. So I'm very excited about that part. Um, the last thing I'll say is that, actually I have two last things. Uh, one is, so I came all the way to Australia and I invite everybody to come to Boston. Boston, you know, is the home of the Puritans. Well, uh, amazingly, and I still can't believe it, we just got our first casino. Uh, right, in the heart, right in the heart of uh, Boston. And um, in fact, it's opening this month, um, opening in June. And so we are having our next big data conference in Boston. I also joke that this is purely a practitioner's event and chances are I'm not even going to be invited because they don't let sales and marketing people come to the, these things. But um, if you want to talk to the Ubers and the Facebooks and uh, the Cupertino California company uh, and understand how they're driving digital transformation in their business, then this is a great show for you guys to participate in. And then the last thing I'll say is I did my own analytics. And so part of most of the time I've been with Vertica, I have actually been uh, aligned to our OEM business. And what's interesting is I found that companies, and some of these companies who you've never heard of, um, that embed Vertica are getting acquired or, or going public. And what I love to tell the story about is companies like IBM that um, buy Explorus and rebrand it Watson Health, two years later are still using Vertica, which just speaks to how impressive the technology is. Opower, that was bought by Oracle, three years later is still using Vertica, okay? Um, we've had products from IBM, uh, a number of others that have been using Vertica for decades. So, or excuse me, not decades, but a decade. Um, uh, so, you know, Vertica truly is a transformative technology and I encourage all of you guys to work with Jack as well as Raghu locally to see how we can help you drive digital transformation. And with that, I'll turn it over to Raghu. Thank you. And um, I guess we'll save questions for the end. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Uh, before I get to the actual demo, just want to give you a quick background about Auckland Transport as such, as an organization. Uh, they were formed like five, six years ago uh, as a super city concept and so that all the surrounding cities are do come under just one council as a super city. And this was, Auckland was uh, the city which was chosen because most of the people, you know, 1.4 million people out of the 4.5 live in Auckland. And they wanted to make this as a super city. They also wanted to get everything later, all the funding to come in a right way. And that's where, you know, they had 2,000 cameras, 2,200 cameras, uh, and idle doing microphone focus, idle doing the video analytics on top for a variety of use cases, as Mark mentioned, uh, cyclist safety or you know, finding out events and alerts and so on and so forth. All the, but all that data, which is generating the metadata, uh, now is being poured into Vertica. Now, for different uh, use cases, such as CBD analytics, okay? Uh, simple use cases could be, if IDLE is doing uh, ca vehicle categorization, then for a specific route, you would know which vehicle types are you know, uh, available or using that road at a specific point in time. And then you know the footprint of usage uh, in terms of you know, what vehicles come through. Uh, even on intersections, they would have cameras put in to detect faces, obviously, you know, uh, with, with proper permissions, detect faces just to count a uh, number of people who are going on and out so that they can adjust the pedestrian walking and all the crossing uh, timings. All of that is done in real time and on Vertica. The use case that Mark was referring to was more to do with uh, uh, trying to the first part of the use case is that they wanted to predict on all the 800 or, you know, or routes, they wanted to predict what, what will be the number of net passengers at any bus stop for any trip and any route. So just to clarify what a route is, a route is a route where you go from point A to point B with multiple bus stops on it and you make, throughout the day, you make multiple trips on it. So they wanted to know what will be the net riders at any bus stop and, and the overcapacity situation as well. And we, we do that, and the reason why you see <clears throat> POC there, AT is also a very fast organization. We go there, we try and do pilots for them, and they straight away take that to production. This is a different use case that I'm gonna uh, present to you. It's about, again, uh, it's semi-production at the moment, 
And what this does is um, every bus will have a G GPS tracker and every bus stop will have a receiver. Okay, as soon as the bus travels from a you know, specific route, specific road, it will keep on feeding that information as a GTFS feed. Now, most of the transport companies will have this uh, feed coming, you know, sent, sent out as an open data. We are capturing that information straight from there. So sometimes, you know, you, it, it basically uh, depending on the quality of data. And we are able to actually identify whether based on the route information that was given to us. So the way these two machine learning or predictive analytics projects or uh, you know, initiatives working with each other, the prediction that I make, how many passengers will be there at what bus stop, based on that, they make their bus schedule, okay? Because their buses are managed by external vendors. Now, based on the footprint that they know, number of riders will be there in the bus, they ask for number of buses. So they have buses right from 75 seaters to even about 15 seaters. And if they, they realize that, look, on Wednesday, for that route, all, all those trips, there'll be only two passengers, they would rather send a taxi, which will cost them 50 bucks, but not the entire bus. See what I'm saying? Now that they know this, and they're planning the route, they feed this route information every month at the moment. They plan to do that like every, every week or something. Now this information, as you would see here, uh, I know it's uh, too small, but the last routes were loaded on 22nd of May based on uh, the real-time information that was fed by the other models, okay? And what we are able to do now that because Vertica has got internal geospatial capability built in, we know what where the bus should be and in real-time how it is sending signals. So we are able to tell them whether the bus has taken a detour or was there uh, roadworks going on because of that the bus was not on the proper track, so on and so forth. So let's have a look at this and there are various aspects as well we cover. And I want to show the, the best example. I want the bus uh, to be still uh, in motion. So as we speak, based on the Auckland time, this is the bus which is in route at the moment. And the, by the picture, you would have realized it's a ring route. So the bus keeps going on the same uh, start and end point on the same. Um, and if you would see uh, that the bus stops have been given uh, different uh, uh, com combinations. So for this, uh, for co different colors, which we predicted that look based on its low position at the moment and based on we know what's happening footprint on the road what will be the delay of the bus and these circles out here they that's we are detecting in wherever if the bus actually had uh, sent a different sort of signal other than the bus stop itself and the black ones is for which we we, we don't have the data but good part is now i can actually live track the bus so it should be somewhere here there you go and if we wait here for like five minutes, I don't know whether it's waiting for the traffic to go on or whatever, but if you wait here like for uh, maybe see, you can see there are two icons now and it's moving. So it's real, real time. We are able to track the bus so that we know sitting at one place that Auckland Transport will be able to do a lot of things with this information. The other thing that I wanted to show you was, uh, so we also try and count, we have, we are getting data source from other systems about the roadworks planned or is there any incident like accident or something. We also consider that and for that route we display, you know, are there any works planned or whatever. They also wanted a sim simple dashboard uh, which shows the map of the entire city and show us all the routes at one go. So these are all the different clusters of buses. So this icon means just one bus and the point actually means it's moving in the uh, you know northwest direction there um, whereas these clusters that you see what we are doing how the way geospatial capability works is that you do a map based on uh, geometry uh, of the map given and then you basically draw lines a bigger line so that that's the one that you see there and we call it a polygon okay and now bus has got a GPS tracker which we considered as a point and there are functions standard functions as intersect and that's why I was talking to uh, uh, some, someone who was talking about special databases and people by having to buy different database versions because they don't have special or geospatial capability. This Vertica is what, what Vertica is trying to do is find out those interactions in seconds based time. So if I click this cluster, this number basically means there are 292 buses which are around the city at the moment. And then if I click on it, 
I break, I get a breakup as in you know where 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 those actual buses are in real time at the moment. As, as you could see, it's basically eastbound bus, whereas this is northbound bus, and they 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 actually know what's happening around around the city, or even if there is road works, for example here, we actually pointed out. So uh, no, not this. I need to zoom it, zoom it in a bit more. From memory, I remember there's some road works on 29th and uh, finishing on 30th. Um, yeah, so May 29th, uh, finishing on June. So for a month, uh, they will be. That's the metro. The building. Huh? That's the metro line, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's right. Correct, metro. We call it metro. Uh, but again, you know, so not only a single vendor manages, uh, Metro is again an umbrella and different vendors actually manage different buses. And they do... How does it handle accidents? Aye? How does it handle accidents? Because that's unexpected events. Correct. That's a planned outage. Correct. But an unplanned so outage. So that's more, more or less done on, uh, on idle. Yeah. So where uh, you get live feed from all those cameras and they have got uh, workflow done on, on idle which can actually get ambulance or you know uh, towing all those sorts of services so that's orchestrated at the moment on on idle and, you bring that in as well. and then i get the metadata uh -huh. based on what happened where so especially i also want to talk to you about the retail story uh, is one of the one of the customers in new zealand again uh, uh, i can't i can't really name them but they were kind of you know worried about amazon uh, coming to coming to australia and that's when they wanted to know uh, most of the retailers were right, and that's when they wanted to know, hey, uh, what can we do with uh, you know predictive analytics? Can you tell us you know what we will be selling so that we will only buy, only stock, and only distribute what's required at what store? And you know, we analyzed about twenty thousand products, and we were able to get about ninety five percent accuracy predicting you know any 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 sort of products out of, of what they had. Sorry, Is that I had a general merchandiser. Sorry? Is that a general merchandiser? So it's more about the POS machines, uh, sales data. Yeah, but what were the business they were in? Are they in general merchandising? Uh, general merchandising, yeah. except yeah. groceries. Yeah. Cross yeah. Cross yeah. Yeah. But I think Woolworths probably would be more into basket analysis and trying to, trying to isn't it? Uh, oh, we also have a big W, but we, we won't count down now. Correct, yeah, that's right, that's right. Sorry, we digress. So that's, that's about it from my end. Any questions uh, that you guys have? Uh, uh, who, who's built the front end and uh, the, the, the presentation layer? Did you guys do that? Yes, we did that. We had strong partnership with uh, with uh, Logi. So this is built on Logi. <laughs> but we can work with anything. You know, we have got huge professional services team. So the front end is actually built by professional services team. Yeah. And What's the benefits of being realized by monitoring this data? Uh, as I said, you know, they, they do a lot of... They, uh, Objective is to serve the customer. So one of the objective of Safe Cities is to serve the customer better. They have citizens. Are, are, I'm also a New Zealand citizen. We have got different uh, expectations from the buses. So we think that if the bus is 80% full, it's crowded, which is actually not not right. And then these guys actually want to know. They don't, they don't want single negative comment uh, uh, on on you know council or often transport. But that's how you know that's how they get. More and more funding and get get opportunities to to do more. Now, so from if you go and visit their knock, it's like you know you have probably have two hundred big screens going around and they are watching every corner from a safety perspective. It's not about doing surveillance on people, but like cyclist safety is, is a big big thing. Um, so we they need to know what what happens to the cyclists so that the people are more motivated to use it. Do you have a dashboard though that shows the probability that a bus is on time? Uh, no, actually, uh, it was because they reported the routes and forgot to repay the models. So, <laughs> it, <laughs> that's what happens eh, when it is in full swing and we everyone is on onto it. But sometimes uh, the person actually had retrained the uh, no, re uh, that new routes were created, but they forgot to kind of activate a process which takes the new routes and trains retrains. So as a, that's why I said it's semi-production at the moment. Uh, it's not fully production. But it's still, I mean, I remember they were doing the previous calculations of bus, uh, or bus planning on Excel. And then that's how we kind of took them on a different case. Yes. How much time are you going to allow for the training exercise? 
uh, for training, yeah. I remember the, the read, I mean, it's very fast. I mean, the uh, should be about 600 milliseconds a model. Right, but would you allow like two months for the models to learn? Or is it... So you're talking about how much uh, the history data that we train? Yeah. Five yeah. years. Five years? Yeah. Right. But again, but common idea. live, you must have some prediction happening. You must have some prediction in there, right? Correct. So it did some prediction based on what oh, five what years, five years the past. and then oh, right. I also retrain because the, the the amount of time it takes on Vertica to retrain is like in milliseconds, and I'll probably right. have sure, sure, sure. yeah five hundred models, which takes about probably five minutes. Yeah, yeah minutes. I'm, I'm yeah. actually talking about the data year right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, this retail use case that I was talking about, where I did comparison against R, yeah. I was I was competing in this uh, two hundred core machine with two terabytes of RAM. And I was given the 8 CPU, uh, 64 GB, 3 node Vertica cluster. Yeah. They were doing close to about 700 milliseconds mm -hmm. for training. And for prediction, they were taking about 450 milliseconds. I was like 300 milliseconds to make predictions and about 600 milliseconds to, with such a small hardware. Um, because it's a R, Python, these are all single thread. I, there's nothing wrong with it. I code myself into par, uh, Python and R as well. But these are single threaded applications and that's why uh, Mark mentioned about the UDXs. What we do is that we, we bring that code into Vertica using UDXs and now the single threaded application suddenly becomes multi-threaded because it runs on all nodes. It runs much faster. Instead of pulling the data out in iterations. It's, it works well with 100 MB of text file, load it in Python, easy. But what if you had a, a table or data set which have, got, which have like 100 terabytes of data that you want to train into a model. Because there's no machine learning if there's no data. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is, is there much functionality around model life cycle? Um, so if uh, champion challenges sort of stuff. Absolutely. And, uh, and, uh, Great and, search. And, and uh, um, tracking the uh, performance. performance as a kind of... Absolutely. So for us, out. absolutely. So for us, a model is nothing but an object in a database, like a table yeah. of view or anything. And then if I go and get summary of that model, I will exactly get the coefficients, p-values, z-values, all of that related to that model. Okay, I can then, in the naming convention, I can do some naming convention, like the retraining that these guys are doing. They're exa exactly doing the same thing with the routes. And then for that model, I know what were the coefficients and what was the R, R squared or accuracy for that model and then I can retrain and compare that against others. This is not only true for Vertica models but the models that we bring in you, of R, Python, using UDX, we also keep them as database objects. So entire mo model management life cycle. I hope you're coming to Sydney with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. Actually, uh, really Sydney good. was downstairs. Exactly. Yeah, the Sydney Transport was downstairs, and they were like, "Yeah, they were interested." Yep. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was old <laughs> <laughs> Well, I used to live in New York City, and I would have loved to walk into the uh, the subway and just say, "Oh, it's ten minutes before the next train. I'll go get a taxi." Mm. You know, that that would have been huge. I've only been a tourist, I wouldn't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if there are no further questions, uh, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time.